this time in the Magic Kitchen, we are having our first listener-led episode, How Has Witchcraft Changed Your Life? I'm Leandra Witchwood. And I'm Elise Wells. And welcome to the Magic Kitchen podcast, where we talk about magic, kitchen witchcraft, herbs, and everything in between. Magic Kitchen Podcast is funded and supported by thewitchwoodteahouse.com, offering a variety of hand-blended loose leaf teas, as well as loose herbs for all of your ritual, spell work, wellness, and everyday enjoyment needs. If you would like to support this podcast while sipping a great cup of tea, head over to thewitchwoodteahouse.com and find the magic that's in store for you. I'm excited for this one. This one's good. (laughs) Yeah, this is a topic very near and dear to our hearts because like most of you, I'm sure, witchcraft has changed our lives. Absolutely. I am a better person. I'm a different Mm. person in the best way because of the growth witchcraft has been able to provide me. Yeah. Yeah. And the perspective, like there's so much more perspective. We have, you know, a, a deeper connection with the world around us, a deeper connection to who we are, our authenticity. And this is important for living that life, that best life that we're always seeking. Yeah. And magical living is mm. one word for it, right? We could call it intentional living. We could call it spirit led living, yeah. but at the core of everything we talk about is about how you can, you can grow with witchcraft, how yes. it can be, you know, Maybe it starts as a tool for you yeah, and it becomes a way of life. Maybe it starts as a mindset shift and it starts providing you with different ways of viewing things, different perspectives, different approaches. Mm -hmm. It's just such an expansive practice. And it's a topic that is so personal. So we're really grateful for everybody who took the time to send in a voice recording on SpeakPipe. If this is well-received, I think it will be because I really... (laughs) <laughs> I, I felt so like I felt the community love when we got oh, these responses. Yeah. And it's nice to know that you're not alone, that the things you've experienced, yes. the things that you've gone through, the things that you felt or you know, you, things that you felt like, oh, it's just me. I, it, I'm alone in this. You realize when you hear yeah. from other people and their experiences, how not alone you are, how much of this we're in together. And I think yes. that's important. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And that's why we created our community spaces Mm -hmm. because there's just so much to be gained by having a wider pool of people to talk to, to share Mm -hmm. with, to learn from, and also just to have a reminder to stay on your magical path. Sometimes we get stagnant and, you know, I I share weekly journal prompts, monthly rituals, and also new on the new moon exclusive articles just for some new witchy topics that you might not have thought of, you know, like associations of certain trees in different cultures or, you know, practices from ancient Greece versus ancient Norse and doing comparisons and introductions to things. Cause I think we have more to learn from community than we can ever learn on our own. Yeah, I agree. And the idea of getting some sort of mentorship, I think, is essential, especially when we feel stuck, when we feel overwhelmed, when we don't know what to study next or what to tap into next. Yeah. So and, and that's one of the key foundation points of the community I run, the Rebel Mystic community, is the mentoring. So not only do I Ooh, walk yes. you through how to use a certain technique or how to perform a certain spell or how to a- adopt or address or uh, apply a certain uh, mentality or uh, technique or um, theology, then we go on to actually using that in a live ritual. And many, many of these people that you'll hear from today, they are in our communities. So they work with us yeah. directly. And it's so nice to hear from them directly how 
what we do together, Elise and I together and independently, how that helps our community grow and helps individuals expand and learn and really step into their authentic self, live that life that they're meant to live. Yeah. And our first, our first submission to our speak pipe comes from Bianca and Bianca was my first ever community member and my longest standing community member. So shout out Bianca. I really appreciate you. (laughs) Yes. I, I love interacting with Bianca in our live um, rituals and our live discussions and mentoring sessions. She's always got so many good questions and I love it. <laughs> yeah. And it was really good to hear. She was also the first submitter to this, this one ah. request. So <laughs> it's just it, like, it, it really felt right to start with her response. Yeah. When I was a young girl, my mom once told me that my great grandmother was a witch. From that point on, I was hooked. But It wasn't until two years ago that I felt called to witchcraft more deeply, like a bell was rung. I love the path that I'm walking now. I have a new understanding and I feel changed for the better. That's awesome. I just love that. Like, (laughs) yes, I felt the same way. And I love the way that Bianca explains that there's the hereditary path, Mm -hmm. you know, but that's not really all there is. Like you might've had five generations of witches in your family, but it's not for you. Vice versa. You might have zero and it is the right path for you. And I think that's such an important point. I love that. I love that, that image of like a bell ringing. I, I know what that feels like. You know, we, those moments with spirit are what we're in it for. (laughs) That's why we're here. (laughs) Our next submission comes from Nadia. And Nadia is a Greek witch. Mm. I've had the pleasure of meeting her in my time here in Greece. So here's Nadia's response, how witchcraft has changed her life. Witchcraft has helped me in multiple ways. Uh, There is the spiritual aspect and the practical aspect. Um, As far as the practical aspect goes, for sure, I have learned things that I never knew before, such as um, the beneficial aspects of uh, herbs and spices and things like that and how to basically create things from scratch using things I find in nature. Um, But there's also the spiritual aspect where I think is most impactful for me. And it has helped me understand myself better and where I want to go in the world, uh, what values I adhere to and how to actually stand up for myself in a way it has given me power that no one else could give me and i have found it in myself through practicing uh through spell casting and other and she gets cut off there at the end but um she said other spiritual practices so i i love this theme of empowerment that we're yes we're gonna see quite a bit in the upcoming responses um that's what that's that's the word that comes to mind. Yeah. yeah, exactly. When I think about witchcraft personal and power. if I had to answer this in one word, yeah, exactly. Stepping into our personal power. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> You may have noticed that here at the Magic Kitchen Podcast, we don't have sponsored ads. That's because this is a fully listener-supported show. We do what we do for you, dear listener, and when you join my magical living community on Patreon, you're supporting all the time and energy that goes into setting up podcast interviews, writing articles and rituals, my paranormal mystery novel, and all that I do. And in exchange, you're getting over 10 exclusive journal prompts, rituals, witch tip videos, meditations, and more each month. If you love this podcast, consider joining my magical space. I can't wait to meet you and be an even bigger part of your magical journey. Go to patreon.com slash Elise Wells or follow the link in the show notes. Next, we're going to hear from Juliet. Witchcraft has changed my life by giving me something fulfilling to look forward to each day. My life in the city has slowed down and I can finally appreciate the past, present, future, and the afterlife. Most recently, witchcraft has taught me to forage in nature, read tarot, honor and channel my ancestors, and manifest. It has led me on a completely uncharted yet passion-fueled path to a new chapter in life. 
Since studying witchcraft more intently this year, I've said goodbye to a seven-year job that was no longer serving me, goodbye to my vices and old relationships, and goodbye to the version of myself who was always too afraid to let go of limiting beliefs. Witchcraft has helped me make a complete 360 in a world that was no longer magical to me. I'm grateful to have an opportunity to study this path and can't wait to see what it evolves next in my life. I guess you can say I'm under its spell. I love that. Thank you, Juliet. Sometimes there is that factor of destruction, leaving things behind, even the things we built and we spent a lot of time and energy on. I can totally relate to that. I left teaching after four years and a lifetime of thinking it was the right path for me. And now I just teach in a very different capacity. But at the time, it felt like, you know, destruction, like I was losing everything. So it's really good to hear somebody else on that journey of self-discovery because creation is just the other side of destruction. So next we're going to hear from another international witch, Lisbeth. Lisbeth. Hi, I'm Lisbeth. I'm a French kitchen witch and I practice witchcraft for 10 years now. I started when I was 22, 21 almost. And I think I started first because I wanted to get out of the feeling of being crushed by life. Uh, most of the time I was thinking like I didn't have um, a lot of help or wise uh, advice from people older than me because I was very lonely. And I started to ask for advice and guidance for the spirits and spirits of the land. Now I practice for 10 years and I have two deities I'm devoted to. I think it's the right way to say it in English. <laughs> and I have spirits of the land too that I contact sometimes. Um, for example, I was on an art residency in a castle in France uh, where Diderot lived and there was a lot of artists and even people working on this place. And I had really good advice from people from this place. And yes, it means for me, witchcraft is changed my life for not being lonely anymore and have different kind of advice between my ancestors, deities and spirit. I think that is a really important thing that we sometimes feel uncomfortable talking about how loneliness can yeah. really take its toll on us. Yeah. And yeah, witchcraft really does show us how, how alone we really are right but it also is it, it's it's everything all at once because we're solitary in what we do even in a coven you're still yeah. having your personal growth experiences yes. you still have your personal practice too yeah but you but then the way spirit is always with you when we're on this path mm -hmm. It's such a comfort. Yeah. Well, and I, I like how she touched on the life affirming, life changing, life changing aspect of it too, because I think that's something we're always seeking. We're always start seeking that affirmation that we're doing the right thing and we don't have to rely on someone else to tell us that it's okay. We just yeah. do it because it feels right to us. And that's what it's about. There's no doctrine. There's no dogma <laughs> telling us what to do, how to do it, when to do it, why to do it. <laughs> Yeah. And I really related to that moment of just asking the land spirits, just putting it out there. Like I'm lonely. What can I do? What can I do? <laughs> like I, I felt so lost in the past and the way spirit reacts and responds to that need for, for change and growth is amazing. Yeah. It's unlike anything. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. <laughs> All right. Who's next? Our next Our next response comes from Elisa, mm. and we're going to see a couple other themes and something that I think is relatable for most, maybe not most listeners, but a good chunk of listeners coming from Christianity and, and how witchcraft impacts us coming from that background. Yeah. Hi, my name is Elisa. I feel like witchcraft has empowered me to find fulfillment in every little aspect of my life. I feel like I had a lot of trauma I was holding on to. Um, growing up in a Christian church that placed a huge emphasis on not trusting your own heart, not trusting your intuition, and just kind of like allowing Jesus to take the wheel of every little aspect of your life. And in practicing and discovering and learning about witchcraft and 
kind of honing my own practice, I've been able to let go of that, to heal from that, and also to learn to trust my own gut, to trust my intuition, to grow in self-confidence and self-love. And I feel like it's just allowing me to lead an empowered life, which is something that like I've always wanted, but never felt like I was going to be able to reach. And so, yeah, I feel like witchcraft has just really helped me grow overall and live an empowered life. Yes. Oh, I love yes, these yes, success yes. stories. Yes, Elisa. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Take that power back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that is like, I know we talk about it a lot on the podcast, yes. but witchcraft is an active path. Mm-hmm. Christianity, mm-hmm. by and large, there are exceptions, of course, but the way it's taught, you know, the dogma is passive. It's yes. put it in God's hands. God's yes. got this. You don't have to think about it anymore. Think you know, it. Jesus, take the wheel. Perfectly said, Elisa. Yeah. Like, it's just a little devaluing. You know, it's 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 not a good feeling. It makes you feel powerless. And unfortunately, that's what the patriarchy is all about. So yes. it is it is so subversive what we're doing. Like, yeah. it, we're rebels out here. Uh-huh. I, hey. I love the name for your community. Yeah, like the rebel, rebel mystic. Exactly. <laughs> It's just Absolutely. the perfect name. Yeah. And that's, and that's what it's all about is it's really tapping into your powerhouse. Cause it's always been there. We, we give it away, you mm-hmm. know, like the activity. I, I love this activity. I do it every night before I go to bed, I call in my power, you know, just say something real short, real brief. I call back my power from all the stresses of the day, from all the people of the day, just Ooh, bring it yeah. back in so that when you're sleeping, you can reclaim that for yourself. And be at ease and then maybe you can go into affirmations that help you grow from that but we yeah the active the act of actively pulling our power back to us calling it back to us and activating that for our own benefit is incredible and that's yeah. what witchcraft teaches us to do And yeah, it's overwhelming at times. (laughs) There's plenty of overwhelm in this path, but that's why we need community. And that's why I'm so grateful for all Mm -hmm. of this. Yeah. And along these same lines, we got a written response from Elizabeth. Mm. um, And it, it, it was, it was long and personal. So we decided to adapt it for the public audience. (laughs) So Elizabeth, if you're listening, (laughs) We really appreciated hearing all of your thoughts. I know we messaged and talked about it too, but yeah, we, we definitely uh, wanted to just just keep it keep it uh, short for everybody listening. So Elizabeth says, like surprisingly many witches, I come from a Christian background. I grew up Christian, and even though I started living and traveling on my own at an early age, I kept my Christian beliefs and joined and joined Christian groups. Mm-hmm. These groups strongly encouraged a spirit led life, and I was genuinely happy in those years. But the problem started when I joined the actual church and settled down. Uh After years of this life, I decided to look further into witchcraft. I learned about energy and intentions. I learned how other people did their witchcraft. I learned about crystals and grounding and connecting to spirit and spirit guides, shadow work. I decided to do all those things that we weren't supposed to do as good Christians. And I found it to be very nourishing and healing. I found my curiosity for life and got my life back all because of witches who decided they were going to make podcasts and consequently (laughs) handed me back my life. So I would say that witchcraft saved my life. And that's a big change. Nice. I'm, I, I, I have to say, I'm just so honored when people choose to include us in their journey. Yes. That's, that's always what I say when somebody joins my community, I always make sure I don't just say thank you for being here, but thank you for letting me be a part of your journey journey because it is so personal and it, and it is hard to reach out, but once you do it, it, it's that lovely homecoming feeling. And, oh yeah, and it's, it's, it's the most rewarding thing I've ever done to help people on, on their journey into witchcraft. Real talk for a minute. (laughs) Real talk. (laughs) That's what we're all about here. And And that's one of the things I hear a lot is how much people enjoy listening to us because it's casual. We're, we're real. We're not fluff. We're not pageantry. We're here talking about real life witchcraft and it's not this dark sinister i don't know fluffy bunny any it's not none of these extremes that we see in social media typically but it's real down-to-earth conversations about this path 
and the good, the bad, the ugly, the, you know, the not so great, the great, you know, <laughs> all of those things. Yeah. Yeah. I, a friend of mine sent me a video from a, a I don't know what she does. Actually, this was like a video of her at a conference. So I don't know who this, this person was, Okay, but she was talking about connecting to spirit and I won't name who it was. Cause I don't want to be like that, no. but I, I, the way she was talking it kind of bummed me out. I don't, I couldn't mm. point my finger to why. So I, I set it aside, but I kept thinking about it. So I went back to it and I realized that what was upsetting to me was that she made her audience think that if they weren't, if they didn't take her advice, that things were going to go wrong for them. Oh, hmm. That was the tone she had. It was fear-based it, and yes. it was, and it wasn't about witchcraft, but it was about spirituality as a bigger umbrella. And so it really I, I like, just, it, it, it was kind like of predatory. Was, right. Like what the church, the Christian church does. Yes. And experience. that's it. That's yeah. what hit me. It was the way that I was kind of poo-pooed as a kid when I would say, but wait, why is stealing a cookie the same amount of sin as killing somebody? Right. And they were like, because God said, and it was very like, oof, this God guy, oof. you don't want to be on his <laughs> bad side. Like that was my first impressions as a look. Right. I remember asking that question and getting scolded in Sunday school and mm -hmm. stopped asking questions shortly thereafter. Yeah. Well, and the same thing, I would get the same reaction from people. Like the question that I would always get the, the question I would always pose and I always get the biggest pushback because I know it triggered them was, okay, so <laughs> if the devil is so cunning that he would convince us that what we're doing is right and good when it actually isn't, how do we know that the God you're teaching me about, the God you're forcing me to follow is not that devil doing that exact thing that you're warning me about? Oh, oh, I love that. Oh, I wish that just... I wish we were friends as little children I <laughs> I know, we would have been great. to get into it in Sunday school. Yeah. Oh, my God. They hated that one. And then, I, oh, of course, I'd follow it up. I'm like, well, it doesn't make sense if Morningstar was the light of God. Right. And he fell because he disobeyed God. Why would he punish me in hell? Why would he why would he do that? It seems like if I disobeyed the same way he did, he'd be rewarding me, <laughs> you know, Hey, come on over. <laughs> yeah. And then, the, yeah, they hated that one too. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, yeah. And, and I hate, I hated too, that I saw this same narrative in mm -hmm. somebody who was preaching from a, from a non-Christian place, right. you know, right. somewhere, like I said, it wasn't witchcraft, yeah. but but coming at it from like a build your own spiritual practice background, which is what yeah. we believe too. Mm -hmm. And yet mm. it wasn't actually what she was saying. What she was really saying is, but I would take this advice or else. Right. You know, and, and I, that is like the opposite of our, of our beliefs. Like and I, it really I just, mm. it just demonstrates how unremoved we are still from the patriarchal monotheistic viewpoint. There still has yeah. to be that hierarchy in many, There's many a lot of, of work these, left yeah. to do. There's so much work left to do. We're all still doing it. You know, I still find myself falling into those traps and I really try hard when I'm teaching in the community, when I'm teaching in my courses, when I'm doing the mentoring to not say this is the only way because it's not. And that's something I'm very, very careful about and very conscious of when I'm speaking, even, even if I'm just giving a lecture somewhere or talking about my books or writing my books, it is very important for me to, to have those I'm speaking to, to understand that this is the way I do it. You don't have to do it. Yes. My way. This is an option for you. If you yeah. follow my, my recommendations and have good results, good. If you follow my recommendations and have bad results, try something else. Yeah. And I, I yep. find too many influencers, too many teachers are teaching like, this is the only way and you better do it my way. And there's that fear mongering. There's that hierarchy still being presented. And that's not what this path is about. Have you had signs experiences, or dreams lately that made you stop and wonder, was that the call from deity? Maybe you know you've had the call, but you're not sure you want to answer. This is the sign you've been waiting for to take the next step with deity work in your spiritual practice. My next workshop, join me August 26th at 4 p.m. EST for a 90-minute course providing you with tools, steps forward, 
different perspectives and various explorations on the aspects of deity work so that you can know which path to take on your journey with the god or goddess. This workshop will be recorded for anyone who can attend live. Early bird tickets are on sale until August 10th. Whether you've never worked with deity before or you're ready to take your deity work to the next step, this workshop is for you. I look forward to seeing you there. Up next, we are going to hear from Poppy. Poppy. Hi, Poppy. Hey, Elise. Hi, Leandra. Thank you so much for making the Magical Kitchen Witch podcast. It's been so helpful in my journey. Um, witchcraft has impacted my life in such a positive light. Uh, the spicy psychology that I needed allows me to be more confident in my daily life. Uh, I kind of step forward with more intention. I'm looking around at my life and figuring out, okay, what can I do that's going to impact my community and my world uh, that I have power and control of? And I think that that has been just, just so good in my life. I used to be very insecure. I used to not really know where I was supposed to be, where I was supposed to stand. So that that's kind of my journey with witchcraft. I'm pretty new, but that's so far I'm seeing a lot of positive lights. Thank you guys so much again for all you do. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Yay. I love that. Yay, I thank love you, it. Poppy. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. There's that empowerment theme mm-hmm. back again. Back again. Because that's what it is. That's <laughs> what it does. All right. Next, we're gonna hear from Amanda. I'm very much a baby witch. I've only been working with everything for the last year or so. I feel like the biggest thing I have noticed in how my life has changed is the empowerment. I feel like things make more sense. Things that I grew up experiencing and believing make more sense to me. I grew up in a very Christian background and I feel like I really bought into it, but then I was always questioning and wanting to learn about other religions and wondering why one religion was the, had to be the right way. So I feel like now I've broken out of that and I can experience so many things that make so much more sense to me. I feel like the sense of positivity, I feel more grounded. And even though I'm just learning, I definitely feel overwhelmed a lot with trying to figure out what to learn about next or what to explore next. And um, definitely a little bit of imposter syndrome sometime, but I feel like all I have experienced has been for the positive and I'm excited to keep learning more. Oh, love it. Great. Great. (laughs) Amanda's also in my community for a very long time. And it's interesting because we found out after chatting that we share some of the same land spirits um, ah. <laughs> in places we've lived. So I, I just love that. And I think that yeah. I, I love the way the land spirits, while they're a different experience for all of us, cause that's how life is, right. We, we all have our own realities, Yeah. but I think it's, it's so telling the way we all can experience them and have that same sort of takeaway from, from the experiences at home, wherever home might be. Up next, we're going to hear from Saf, who actually speaks a little bit more about land spirits. Nice. I would say the biggest impact that witchcraft has had on my life is helping me become more aware and not just of like myself or the people around me, but everything around me. Um, I live in a desert climate and I used to hate it. I would complain about the summer months. I would complain about how we don't have a lot of big green wildlife, uh, just constant like upset about the area that I lived in. And now I'll be driving around and I think of how beautiful the brush looks. Um, I will make comments about all the cacti that are around and what the spirits are like there. Um, I notice the mountains. I notice how my body reacts to certain climates and I've actually found myself enjoying certain climates more because I'm so aware. Um, It's so interesting and so crazy to me how just taking a more relaxed look at life, but also critical thinking of life has led me to appreciate the land that I live in and what it's provided to me. Love that. Love that. I love the part about critical thinking, because I think that's something that doesn't get emphasized enough in witchcraft is the critical thinking aspect. We have to be critical thinkers. We have to think for ourselves. We can't go with the status quo. We actually have to brush up against Mm -hmm. it and kind of, you know, turn it on its head a little bit. And that's what witchcraft is about is developing that critical thinking. So you can 
discover who you are so you can live authentically, so you can really dig into the roots of what you want and need in your life and manifest that. It's so powerful. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And like Amanda said, like realizing there is no one true path and that asking why is it's not only, you know, okay in witchcraft, it's encouraged and it's mandatory because there's so much research and digging and learning and experiencing that we have to do on this path. And yes, yes. And that it's, it's enriching (laughs) and it's challenging and it's like the, like the most effective kinds of growth. It's challenging in the right ways. Yeah, exactly. Next, we're going to hear from Lisa. Good morning. My name is Lisa, and I am a queer eclectic witch, is the best I can say. Um, I only recently realized that things I was doing and things that I loved um, really converged with witchcraft. Mm -hmm. And I have to say that it has um, provided me a new focus for things that I really loved doing already, getting outside, getting in nature, uh, growing plants, things around the kitchen. Um, A lot of what I do is hearth hearth magic, I guess. Um, Anyway, I feel like it has just changed my life and that it makes me feel so much more centered and um, down to earth. I don't know. Maybe (laughs) I think I'm rambling, but um, everything I'm learning just really helps me feel like I get to the core of who I am. And that is really kind of amazing. Um, That's uh, really been life changing for me. So anyway, that's it. I love your podcast. I love the Patreon. You guys are amazing. And I've learned so much from you. So thank you very much. And uh, look forward to hearing this whole episode. Have a great weekend and full moon. Bye bye. Thank you, Lisa. Yeah, no Lisa, Lisa's <laughs> no, not at all. I was gonna say that. I was like, you are very you're succinct. And also I think that in a way that last sentence felt a bit channeled, you yeah. know, about about the way that it's helping you find find your center and find the core of your being. Like mm. that's the kind of messaging that, you know, we call it we can call it downloads or we can call it yeah, um, you know, messages we receive or but that that's like such a core part of, of what we're doing and what makes us feel so empowered. And it's interesting too the way I think a lot about labels a lot and how, you know, the label of which both is and isn't helpful, <laughs> you know, like it says a lot, <laughs> but it also like, we're all so individual within that. Yes. So I like that you added that qualifier of like, like queer eclectic yes. witch, because, because that is something it comes into it, you know, the way that we view, like, we always talk about this, how like the male, the, like the God and goddess, divine feminine slash divine masculine, like the way that traditionally that's been almost like a division point. Yeah. Like that's really falling apart now in the best way. And we're finding like the way non-binary expression is coming into things Mm. is really, really empowering. And we're actually working on um, getting together some non-binary, which is, and spiritual practitioners into a panel, but these panels take a lot to put together. So that is still yet to come, Yeah, <sighs> but we're working on it. And, um, you know, we want it to be the most diverse and the most expansive that we can make it, mm-hmm. um, with, with as many practitioners as yeah. we can. And, uh, and we've also already had Yvonne Abro on the podcast and they are a non-binary author, mm-hmm. which I high priestex etc. That is that they're fantastic to learn from. <laughs> awesome. Join me, Leandra Witchwood, in the Rebel Mystic community as we come together and explore the radical, rebellious act of creating sisterhood and engaging in deep self-care. We've got two more responses for you. Next, we have Laurie. 
Hello, Elise and Leandra. The two of you have been influential in helping me realize I can make witchcraft my own and feel genuine about it. Thank you so much. Witchcraft has changed my life over the past six months in some subtle but very powerful ways. One, it's giving me some structure for a spiritual path that has often been wandering and rather vague. Two, it's giving me wonderful new ways to be creative. I've always been an artist, but having worked with my hands for over four decades, my ability to make art by hand has to come in small doses now due to arthritis. Witchcraft is my favorite art form now. And three, witchcraft is helping me to feel more empowered in life. Not because I can cast a spell and zap everything into perfect bliss, but because using energy to change my attitude and outlook on things is really making a difference. When I arrange some meaningful items on a tray and light a candle, I can feel subtle energetic change. Witchcraft helps me to feel better on so many levels, and that, for me, is magic at its best. Blessed be, and thank Thank you again. Wonderful. Uh, yes. Yeah. Mm. Magic really, it, it won't fix it for us, but it'll yeah. remind us that we can fix it. Yes. And it gives us that extra power and that extra oomph to what yeah. we need to do. Yeah. And when we're in the right headspace, when we're in the right mindset, we can help things align for us so that we can get to where we need to go. Yeah, like you said, it's not going to do it for us. <laughs> we still have to do the work, <laughs> but it'll help us at least recognize the right opportunities, the right circumstances and create those for ourselves. Absolutely. Yeah. Those subtle mindset shifts, mm. they can feel subtle, but they are huge so over profound time. Profound over time. Yes. And that's one thing that I talk about in the Magical Habits workshop is small changes. Don't go for the big boom, you know, don't go for that, the, the yeah. whole energy of, oh, you know, it's new year. So I'm going to make all these changes in my lives, that kind of energy. It's, it's gotta be that small incremental daily actions, the small actions, you know, you want to eat yeah. better. So you start incorporating more vegetables or you take more walks or you want to save money. So you take a dollar from your accounts and put, tuck it away where you don't see it. And over time, these things add up, they become more substantial. And that's, that I think is how the energy of magic really works is this conscious time-based action. Now that's yeah. not to say that some things don't happen instantly and abruptly, but they can. But I also think it's, you know, how things need to work out in your per particular situation. Mm -hmm. And Laurie is also the wonderful person who sent in their story um, after we released our episode on connecting to spirits of place, mm. Laurie sent an awesome story that we read on a later episode. I think yes. the one right after it talking about the way that connecting to land spirits has impacted her. So mm. really great. Like <laughs> just a reminder, you can always email us with insights, Absolutely. thoughts you had after listening to an episode, questions yeah. that came up. We're around on our Instagrams. I'm on Instagram at seeking Numina. And you can also email magickitchenpodcast at gmail.com. We are ready and willing to receive them. We love yeah. hearing from you. We are available. <laughs> so our last response comes from Allie Knoll, host of Mystic and Holistic Podcast. Allie. So I just was, I love that we got to, to end the episode with, with her response because yeah. um, we were on her podcast many moons ago. Yep. And we've, we've had her on the podcast before yes. too. So it's a nice, a nice uh, reprise. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so what witchcraft has taught me is first and foremost to value different religious beliefs, different belief systems in general. The more I learn about witchcraft, the more I practice it for myself and have friends who are witches, seeing them share what brings their heart joy, seeing them share these things that support their families and their lives. It's been really beautiful. And it has really taught me how to open my mind to new ideas, new things. The other thing that witchcraft has taught me, even though I wouldn't necessarily say I am a witch, I wouldn't label myself that I use a lot of witchcraft practices now. And it has taught me to honor the earth, to love mother nature even more deeply, to recognize the ways that I am intrinsically connected with everything and everyone around me and how I can be more respectful and honoring 
of the, of those things. So witchcraft has really expanded me and I can't wait to learn more. And I'm grateful for your show and everything that it does offer. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I, and that's it too. Like committing to a label isn't necessary on your path. It's okay. not, it, it can be helpful for the algorithm, but we don't do it for the <laughs> algorithm. We do it for ourselves. Yes. <laughs> so if it helps you use it, if not, don't worry about worry it, but about you can it. always use witchcraft practices. So I loved, I loved that. That was such a nice way to end, end this episode. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So if you, if you liked hearing from other folks, let us know. We would love to do another episode that, that incorporates listeners in this mm-hmm. way. And you can always join us in our communities. I'm on patreon.com slash Elise Wells. And you can find that link in the description. Yeah. And you can find all of my offerings, my books, my courses, my community through leanderwitchwood.com. That link will be in the show notes as well. Merry meet, merry part, and and merry meet meet again. again. Thank you for joining us on the Magic Kitchen podcast. Please visit my website, leandrawitchwood.com for news, information, and more episodes. I'm Elise Wells, and I can be found at Seeking Numina on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook, and SeekingNumina.com. That's Seeking, N-U-M-I-N-A.